taken a user who uses a phone for two hours per month. That comes to four minutes per day. How many people are using four hour, four minutes per day? So what they did, they took. See, statistics is very very interesting thing, right? So what you do, you take a case which is only four minutes per day. Naturally, those people will not have a problem. Okay, and others will have a problem. So average is reduced. Still, they have reported 25% increase in the brain cancer. So yet the final conclusion says there is a no concrete evidence. Okay. So this is what is happening all over the world. They are right in the fine line, and we don't read the things in more detail. So that is our job to tell you what it is. Now, let me talk about another factor of the mobile phone. All the mobile phones are actually defined today by SAR value, that is known as specific absorption rate. And international limit is that it should be less than 1.6 watt per kg. And most of the Nokia people or Sony or other people they say we are within the limit. For example, this mobile phone has a SAR value of 1.3. They say this is less than 1.6. Some other mobile phone has 1.5. In fact, most of the uh, BlackBerry mobile phones have a SAR value of 1.5, 1.55. Okay, but so they claim they are within the limit. But what they don't tell you that this limit is only for six minutes per day. Has anybody ever told you that it is for six minutes per day? And of course, in that six minutes per day, there is a safety margin of three to four. So even if I take that extreme safety margin, it still means 18 to 24. And see, I'm just trying to correlate. So these are the facts, and that is what they said. Heavy user means half hour per day, and increase in brain, 200% to 400%. So some things, if you are told, then you will take precaution. For example, we carry the mobile phone like this in our pocket, and I have seen most of the teenagers or even children, they keep their mobile phone next to their head. Okay, but now these mobile phones send one pulse every minute to the pay station just to have a communication link. So if you are carrying your phone for say six hours every day, which I think most of us do, so six hours multiplied by 60, 360 pulses is being sent without your knowledge. And when you put a phone like this, Almost half the power is absorbed by the body. So that means every day 180 watt power you are absorbing without realizing. And if you are sleeping, keeping this phone next to your head, then if you are sleeping for six to eight hours, you know how much mobile phone uh, energy you are absorbing. So very simple thing, you know, precaution. If it was told to you, you could take that precaution. Keep the mobile phone at an arm's length. And if that emergency phone comes, you can always pick it up. So you don't have to put it. You don't have to always keep the phone in the room. You go to your office, put it on the table. It is within your reach, right? You go to home, put it on the table or next to your bed or whatever the case may be. So see, these are the things, if you are knowledgeable, you will take the precaution. Now let's come to the cell tower, OK? Now cell tower, the way it has been designed in India, these cell towers are being installed left and right, next to your office, next to your home, right on top of your home, right in the neighbor's house, and so on and so forth. And these towers are looking right at you in many circumstances. There are lots of rules are there in the world, okay? And one of the rules which says, which actually in India we have adopted, that is known as ICNIRP guideline. That is International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. Now the ICNIRP guideline says that for GSM 900, allowable limit is 4.7 watt per meter square. Now the same ICNIRP guideline also says that it is only for short term exposure and not for long term exposure. Okay? It's very clearly written, yet what we have done in our country we have adopted ICNIRP guideline. That is the first thing problem. Second is ICNIRP guideline very clearly says that this is for cumulative radiation. What we have adopted in India for a single carrier. Okay, so if you adopt for a single carrier, remember now 20 carriers are there, several uh, 
uh, operators and several uh, uh, bands are there which are getting transmitted. So what we are exposed to is huge amount of radiation. And also there are international guidelines that these uh, towers should not be installed in a very dense population. They should be installed at a certain height, if at all they are being there. Here, you know, these towers are installed at just about one or two meter height from the cell tower. So what happens now, again, you have to think about, you know, when we talk about this, we have to also think about from where this radiation is coming. Radiation comes from the antenna. You, if you see these rooftops, you will see those long, thin kind of an antenna. In fact, something like a tube-like kind of a thing, tube-like with a reflector, okay? Or you can even think about, you can think of me that as an antenna, okay? Of a similar size, right? Now, these antennas have a radiation pattern. I'll tell you, explain to you the radiation pattern, just like if you have a torch. So if that torch is put here, then only that portion will get more light and other portions will get lesser light. Similarly, antenna has a radiation pattern and these uh, similar of my size antennas have a radiation pattern which we define in terms of horizontal radiation pattern and vertical radiation pattern. And I'll just explain the horizontal radiation pattern being with is roughly about 90 degree. So if I'm actually standing like this, then people in this direction are receiving more radiation, you are receiving less radiation. If it is put like this, then you are receiving more radiation, they are receiving lesser radiation. That is horizontal. In the vertical, typically the beam width is only about 6 to 8 degrees. So for example, if you look at it here, this is the way beam width. So that means your face or head is receiving more signal than your feet. If it is tilted down, then your feet will receive more signal than your face. Now let me give an actual example. Uh, we have a, this Usha Kiran building, I think you might have heard. Uh, it's quite uh, famous. Uh, it was one of the, I think, the first multi-story buildings uh, in uh, Mumbai. Now, that's about 20 plus story building. Uh, in fact, these operators had approached them, they refused to install that tower. So what they did, they installed that tower in the opposite building, which is Vijay apartment on 7th floor. Now, what really happened, after the installation of the cell tower, within about two to two and a half years, there were four cancer cases, and these cancer cases were at 6th floor, 7th floor, 8th floor. And with these uh, people, they did some research on their own and all that. They did find that there is some correlation. They told the operator that this is because of this. Now, operator simply said, well, it's a 20-story building. Only three, four people are having cancer. Why not others have a cancer? And, uh, you know, they have a poor lifestyle and all that kind of a thing. And you can say almost literally they convinced till I came into picture, okay? And around that time, I had published one of my report and I did talk to Mr. Gokhale later on. In fact, he referred that he had read my report and then they revived it, the whole thing. And after that, because see, quite seventh floor and six, seven, eighth floor, you can see they were in the main beam, so they were getting the maximum radiation and hence the effect happened on them at an early, Day. And this happened within two to two and a half years. We also did a measurement in, at a one lady house, uh, old lady. Uh, in her house, the, the radiation level was quite high, but yet within the limit of ICNIRP guideline. And this lady developed cancer within one year. Okay, it's that bad. And uh, again, the same thing in her case also, the doctor said, okay, you just had a, you know, your old person, you had a cancer. But actually, the measurements were done after that in her apartment, because uh, uh, one of my uh, faculty colleague at IIT Bombay lived in the same, same building. So he suspected something, he had read some of my reports. So he actually took the monitor and he did the measurement. And he found that the radiation level is very high. Then recently, I have been uh, doing a lot of these radiation measurements. So I actually found even in Mumbai, radiation levels are so high. I'll give you some numbers. Uh, these mobile phones, see, ultimately what is the purpose? We want mobile phone to work, right? Do you want anything else? So mobile phone works at, in the, in the scientific term, we say minus 70 dBm to up to minus 100 dBm it works, okay? Now minus 70 dBm, it shows full strength. At minus 100 dBm, it may show about one bar or so. 
Now, instead of minus 70 ppm on the Washi uh, Sampada bridge, we measured the radiation level to be 0 ppm, which is 70 dB more than what your mobile phone requires. And 70 dB actually means 10 to the power 7. Uh, so, 1 crore times more radiation on the road. Imagine people who are living close to that, what they are facing. In fact, when we drove here in the last uh, several months, we have found most of the places on our road itself, the signal level is between minus 20 dBm, minus 30 dBm at majority of the places. And I really shudder to think what the residents are facing through. Uh, very recently, I also visited uh, one farmhouse near uh, Gurgaon. There is a Gurgaon, Delhi, uh, Tol Naka is there. So from Tol Naka, just about half a kilometer towards Delhi, there are four cell towers are there. And I visited that, uh, and in fact, next to that four cell tower, again there, I had measured the radiation level to be zero dBm, okay, which is extremely high. So we visited this farmhouse, and the farmhouse own words, I'll tell you, pehle yahan pe 100 lemon hote the, abhi sirf do lemon hote hai. And he said, ye pichle do saal se, we are facing this problem. Ita last year thodi kam thi, is saal to ekdam pura hal hai. And then I asked him that what about the front trees? He says, yeah, pure ke pure row mein koi bhi jaga pe fruit nahi aata hai. Then I actually told him, achha, what tree pe to problem nahi ho rahi hogi. And he actually started looking at me, ki, Bhai, what are you saying? I said, kata, haa, idhar problem nahi hai. Idhar problem hai. I said, uh, then I also asked him, ki, Bhai, abhi butterflies aati hai kya? And again, he started looking at my wife. Pehle yahan pe bhot butterflies aati thi, abhi aati nahi. He actually thought, yaar, mas koi sadhu, sant, oja ki sab ka adhi ho, who can predict all these things. But I actually explained to them, see, this is where that radiation is coming. These are right in the radiation beam. That is why you are not getting these fruits. And the tree where you are getting the fruits, because they had a farmhouse, and it was in the shadow of that, so the bulk of that was getting absorbed by the building. So this is what is happening and in fact he didn't even know. In fact I talked to the Mali also later on. They were blaming the Mali. Yeah, tum pani nahi de rahe ho, tum khad nahi de rahe ho. In fact that Mali was working there for 8-10 years. I'll tell you, I think that day I made one person very happy and that was this Mali, okay? Because so he realized that it is not my problem. And in fact uh, similar cases are there. I talked to a lot of other people. Uh, who have faced these problems, like I talked to somebody in Kerala, they are even saying that uh, inside the coconut there is no water anymore. That water is getting dried up. Now see, if the fruit output is reducing, can you imagine what will happen after one or two years? We are going to have a serious price problem also. People will not be able to eat the fruit. Now, I'll ask a very simple question to you people. Have you ever seen a butterfly, honeybee, pigeon, sparrow and other thing next to a cell tower. You would have actually never seen it. You know why? Because see, uh, birds by virtue of their uh, more volume and less weight, that is how they can fly. So when they have a more volume, that means the surface area is more. So power density, which is the from the microwave multiplied with the surface, they absorb more power and their weight is less. So weight is less means that means the fluid, blood, whatever we would like to say, that is quantity is less. So less quantity is to be heated up and the more power is getting absorbed. That is the reason why you are not seeing it. So in fact, what we have done the calculation, according to my calculation, if we don't do something immediately, in the next two years, we will have 1 crore people getting affected by the cell tower radiation. And I tell you the reason also. Uh, because we have 4.5 lakh cell towers in India. More than 1 lakh cell towers, uh, what, more than 1 lakh cell towers are in dense population. And in that dense, dense population, at least 100 people are living within the close proximity of 10 to 50 meters. And the way what we have done the measurement at different places, according to our calculation, this is what is going to happen. And I tell you, I am not exaggerating at all. In Switzerland, they have reported that Switzerland population is 90 lakhs and 2.5 lakh 
population of Switzerland is already electro hyper sensitive. And they are even thinking to make create a no radiation zone about uh, for these residents. So problem is getting very serious and in fact in this year five times I have gone to Delhi. So I met the TRI people which is Tele Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. I met TEC people, Telecom Equipment Center. Then I also met DOT people. And I'll tell you one of this person actually said, I will not take the name or other thing. He actually said, I said, yeah, radiation is a problem with you. You know, he said, yeah, you know, but we have to keep operators happy. If our telecom regulatory people say that we have to keep operators happy, you can very well understand what is going on. I met the same gentleman again in July and we were discussing again and you know what he said? Professor, you must be getting very frustrated because you are not able to convince us. Okay? So I told him that, well, I am not going to give up. I will keep trying. Okay? One day I will succeed. One day we will be able to tell the people. So what we did, after that, I made a presentation at KVM Hospital. Uh, that was in September, where we talked to the doctors and gave a presentation. We had a formal presentation. If you want, I will uh, mail that uh, proper, it's about 61, 62 pages of uh, slides uh, are there. Uh, very informative. But one interesting thing I can tell you, after the presentation, uh, these doctors came to me and they actually said, Professor, you have solved one of our very big problem which we were facing. I said, what is that? He said, in the last several months, we have received several cases, teenagers are coming to us, they are having either hearing loss or even a tumor next to the ear. And we were thinking that it is because of the headphone they use. But the problem was if you use headphone, then the problem should be on both the side. But these people were having problem only on one side. And now we understand it is because of the mobile phone. Why teenagers again? Teenagers have a relatively thin scalp and it can penetrate more. Uh, in fact, I would prefer about these things, let my daughter speak more about biological effect. But I just want to tell you, see, so many cases are happening and we are just trying to be ignorant about the whole issue. So I'll ask my daughter to talk more about biological effects because for me, biology is, uh, you know, a very strange world. So I'll let her speak about it.